Okay. Well, Senator Patrick, it's good seeing you out here good at the Saddle Up Texas Straw Poll, yeah. and you just made a very good rousing speech to the crowd that was very well received. Thank you. Um, you talked a little bit today about some things that you were doing in, in presidential selection, and tell us how that process goes and what you can tell us about Well, I was, I was proud, Bob, that there were only two legislators invited to this evangelical gathering in Texas. Uh, and we weren't invited because we were legislators, we were invited because um, we're Christians. Mm -hmm. And the process, I will tell you, and we, we agreed to keep a lot of uh, the discussion confidential, otherwise people wouldn't have felt free to speak the line. But I can tell you about the overall process. Uh, in politics, boy, there's a lot of areas for disagreement, and sometimes disagreeable people, even people on the same team. This was the most uh, dignified, um, gentle, spiritual, thoughtful, political event I've ever been involved in. It was, it was handled with great integrity. Everyone had an opportunity to speak. Every candidate was represented. And uh, we spent a lot of time on our knees in prayer asking for God's wisdom. And the one issue that we, it was easy for all of us to agree upon was the goal is to defeat Barack Obama. Obviously, everyone had their candidates they wanted to, to support. Uh, after a number of votes, uh, Rick Santorum was the consensus person by the, by the, the group that was there. Um, uh, Romney and Perry were, were surely, you know, considered Romney was heard from, Gingrich was heard from. Okay. You know, you talk about respectful dialogue, and that's something that's very important to move any issue forward. Recently, we've seen a, a couple of debates between Norman Adams and State Representative Debbie Ridley. I haven't seen those. Well, I hope, hope to get those to you soon. Okay. We can get you watching the Texas GOP vote more often. Watch well, that time. <laughs> I, I understand. But uh, those are the kinds of things that if we as conservatives can come together and have respectful dialogues, even on issues that we disagree on, I think we can move issues forward like that. You can, you know, you can disagree without being disagreeable. And it's sometimes difficult to do it with the party across the aisle. Although in the Texas Senate, in the Texas legislature, legislature we, we do work well across the aisle, better than they do in Congress. In Congress, you know, when Nancy Pelosi was, was a speaker, you know, I had Republicans tell me that she didn't even want Democrats to get together. They didn't, she didn't even want them to have lunch with Republicans. And there's so many, 435, and they're all so scattered. And uh, we're in Texas, you know, in the Texas Senate, for example, there are 31 of us, 19 Republicans, 12 Democrats. We're, all, we're on almost all committees together. Uh, we do break bread together. And there are areas that we disagree, and we really disagree, voter ID, uh, budget issues, sonogram issues, those types of issues. But 80% 80, 80 of the time, or more, we come to some resolution to solve a problem because most problems, particularly on the state level, are not ideological. They are just functions of government. What does government do? We educate, we medicate, we incarcerate. That's what we do. Um, and there's, you know, and there's pretty much unanimous uh, opinion on that. But regardless, there are times we're going to strongly disagree with the Democrats in Texas. And in Washington, it's just a, it's broken. It's just a mess. Um, but if you step back to our own party, the Republicans, there are many views on many issues. We have at least got to work together to come to a resolution. And that's what we did at this evangelical conference this week. I mean, we came to a resolution. I'm still supporting Governor Perry. Uh, and everyone who, I think, supporting different candidates left there still sticking with their person. But I think the consensus pointed to if your person doesn't win, you know, where will we gather around? And so Rick Santorum. Not only did he get you know the most votes, so he had a lot of supporters there, but the other people who support Newt or Romney or Ron Paul or Rick Perry, uh, if their candidates don't get there, I believe they will all rally around Rick Santorum. Right now we have Mitt Romney kind of over here as the moderate Republican. We have several very right. good conservative candidates right. over here. How do we, with that many conservatives in the race, how do we get traction for somebody to get momentum to pass? Well, Mitt Romney? Um, and that was part of this conference today to kind of. Uh, there was a, you know, a clear voice um, for those people who were looking for direction, for voters who were saying, where is the majority of the evangelical community? So um, that was part of this uh, conference today, or yesterday and today. The, the other issue I would say, Bob, it's up to the candidates a little bit. It's up to a candidate to emerge. And the truth is, right now, every candidate in the race has had a stumble or an issue somewhere. You know, you could... 
Perry kind of stumbled in some of the debates. Newt has some personal issues that people are concerned about in, in, the, in the past and, and his kind of volatile um, personality. Rick Santorum, the question is, well, how did he lose his race in Pennsylvania? And is he strong enough? Can he raise money? Mitt Romney, is he, is he really pro-life or is he pro-choice or is it, where is he? Um, so you go down the candidates and each one, there's a question mark. And it's up to the candidates to erase those question marks and convince voters. Um, as much as it is voters to get around one person. And I think the reason we're at this position where we have multiple conservatives is because not one has risen above the others yet on their own. Mm -hmm. And I, I expect we'll see that in the next couple of weeks. Well, I know you've got to hit the road. Yep. Thank you very much for your time. Yep. Congratulations on the sonogram bill. That was Thank a great victory in the Supreme Court. It was a great, great victory. And the Fifth Circuit, we, Fifth we, Circuit. we'll probably end up in the, the, the spring one day, but the Fifth Circuit opinion was so strong that I feel really good about the bill. We were meticulous in how we wrote that bill to be sure it was constitutionally sound. We have 80,000 abortions here in Texas. Uh, if just because of our sonogram bill, if just 20% of the women change their mind, that's 15, 16,000 lives we save every year. You all do a great job. I do watch you all, and uh, but I just haven't seen the latest on that debate. But I'll look forward to seeing it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you much. Thank you. Appreciate it.